Hey everybody, welcome back out to the farm. It is a beautiful overcast day. I might seem a little extra exuberant because this is the third time I have tried making this video. The first time, the weatherman was completely wrong. Uh, it was 30 degrees, they, he said it was supposed to be sunny. Uh, when I say he, I mean, of course, the app, but they were wrong. <laughs> it was brutally cold that day. Luckily, today is actually pretty nice. Um, it's it's very unseasonable for, I think it's December 8th right now uh, in Missouri, and usually it's pretty darn cold uh, this time of year, but it's like 60 degrees right now. It's awesome. Can't complain. Second time I came out here, it was very windy. It was a much nicer day temperature-wise, but holy cow, it was windy. And the camera, as well as my chronograph, I was right in the middle of filming the video, and I was doing the chronograph part. Uh, you know, which is on a tripod. The camera right here is on a tripod. A huge gust of wind came, blew them both over, broke the camera, so I wasn't even able to salvage any of that footage. It also, it hopefully didn't break my chronograph. I guess we'll see here in just a sec, but obviously that just put an end to that day. So that was depressing because uh, this camera right here, it's a Sony ZV-1 in case of y'all are wondering. And that's not the most expensive camera out there, but it's not cheap. It's like $700. So that was 700 bucks I wasn't planning on spending. Especially right after Black Friday when I went a little overboard. Just a little, a little, little overboard. Uh, but one of the great purchases I made right here is the Walter PPKS in 22 long rifle. And it was an absolute steal. It was, I believe, $260 with free shipping. Unbelievable. From Sportsman's... Not Sportsman's Warehouse. I don't know. I'll notate where it's from or show y'all a picture or something. But, um, yeah, 260 bucks. I mean, come on. You can't go wrong with a all-metal gun for $260, which, by the way, has been shooting phenomenally. This thing has been almost 100%. It had one stovepipe. I've put, like, around 200 rounds through it. And uh, I think within the first, like... 20 30 rounds definitely within those first three mags i had one little stove pipe which was really easy to clear and uh it already had chambered another round so i just simply pulled back a t tad bit on the slide and the stove pipe fell right out and i just kept shooting so uh besides that though 100 percent reliable so we're back out here to do this video once and for all <laughs> you know even though it's an overcast day that's okay this is like the best we can ask for and uh, almost middle of December, so you know it's a it's a beautiful day. Life is good, even if I'm seven hundred dollars in the hole. Life is good. <laughs> so um, so far, I've actually only shot Remington Thunderbolt through this. Um, for those of you that watch this channel, you know that I love my Remington Thunderbolt. It's cheap. It's uh, it's it's high velocity. It's like twelve hundred feet per second which is great for a gun like this. A lot of people don't understand that you need a high velocity round in order to cycle this uh, firearm. Um, I think a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth about the Walter PPKS in 22 long rifle because of uh, the fact that they probably use like standard velocity, like CCI standard velocity or whatever kind of standard velocity ammo you have out there. It's like, you know, uh, 1070, 1050 feet per second, something like that. But uh, with Remington Thunderbolt at about 1200, 1250 feet per second, it's it's just operating 100%, like I said. So we're going to start, uh, as you can see, I have the thread adapter on here. We're going to start without a suppressor. I do have three mags, by the way. So after the uh, first three mags, we'll just go and slap the suppressor on. And I want to do some uh, ammunition testing. I brought out a bunch of different kinds of ammo. I don't know if we'll get to all of it. I'm pretty sure that anything you put through this is going to be subsonic. I've been shooting that Rem shooting the Remington Thunderbolt without ears on and uh, with the suppressor. And I haven't noticed a crack. But I got my ears right here because I want to shoot these first three mags without the suppressor. And one of these mags is unlike the others. And I got it marked right here with a little blue tape. So this, I have in here the, I believe it's the Nick Taylor uh, from taylorsupply.com or something like that. But it's the uh, 13 plus one follower. So these are 10 round mags. And uh, Nick Taylor has come out with a smaller follower as well as the fact that 
on the bottom uh, where the base plate is, there's like a huge chunk of metal in there. I'm, I'm guessing maybe it's so that it falls free pretty easily, but as you can see, without that chunk of metal in there, it falls, it drops free anyways. So, um, yeah, I don't know. So far, like I said, though, it's been 100% reliable, but you guys will hopefully see that soon, uh, hoping that a giant gust of wind doesn't come in and ruin this video. Anyways, let's get to shooting. So, I'm at 12 yards right now. And again, just some Remington Thunderbolt. Uh, I do notice that this shoots a little high. The uh, windage is really good, but I was aiming a, about three inches below that right there. So, yeah, like I said, just shoots a little high, so keep that in mind. Not saying, oh, actually one thing, I know I'm talking a lot, I apologize. I'm sure you guys just want to see the shooting, but uh, uh, Walter does actually include a bunch of different accessories with this, which uh, we, we'll take a look at a little bit later, but um, there's three different levels of um, or three different heights of the uh, front sight that you can swap out. So depending on, I guess, on how high it's shooting or how low it's shooting, you can adjust that uh, to your liking. But right now I just got the, I think it's the, the medium one. So just the one that came with the gun. Let's try out that 13 round Nick Taylor. Haha, <laughs> 100%. And it's a regular 10 round factory mag. This uh, thread protector kind of walks loose on you a bit. <laughs> very very nice okay so as you guys can see highly reliable with bulk dirty disgusting look down upon Remington Thunderbolt I love you Remington Thunderbolt I guess we'll go and throw the suppressor on and just do the rest of the video with the suppressor so give me one sec how's that <laughs> so uh, I, I resprayed the uh, targets over there because this does have a point of impact shift. It shoots low now. So before it was shooting high, now it's shooting low. And uh, just want to see exactly where my shots are. So that's why I resprayed it. But this right here is the NAV 22, um, made by Odin Works. And this right here is in its medium configuration. Uh, some people on that last video didn't really understand exactly what they're talking about. And they were like, man, that suppressor's so loud. It, because it's in the, it only has three baffles. It comes with six baffles. It's a modular suppressor. You can adjust it however you want. It's still hearing safe. Okay. <laughs> Plus, what you're hearing on camera is probably way louder than uh, what it sounds like in real life. So it's definitely hearing safe. It's probably hearing safe with two baffles, honestly. But uh, one baffle, probably not. But anyways, I like it with the three baffles because it just has a nice profile. It's not too long. Um, that's what she said. Just so y'all can kind of hear, I guess, how quiet it is uh, with just the three baffles. I'm going to shoot into the dirt. So, very comfortable. Very comfortable indeed. All right. Let's see where this is uh, hitting. Holy cow. Actually, that just went really high. Okay. One thing that's really cool, I do want to point out, you can actually still see the sights uh, over this can right here. Unlike the uh, Ruger LCP-22 light rack that I uh, 
did this you know first uh sort of like ultimate spy gun uh video on um this one right here i still think the ruger lcp2 uh light rack 22 long rifle very long name is uh, definitely a better spy gun just because it's smaller more concealable they both hold 10 rounds um, but that one the uh, bore axis or at least the, uh, the the slide i should say is so low that with the uh, sights and then the sights too i think are higher on this uh, ppks but that ruger lcp uh, you cannot see the sights past the can so you kind of had to guess where you're aiming and everything but with this you can actually still see the sights Almost doubled up. Damn. See? Look how accurate that is. <laughs> All right. I get accurate, or it's accurate until I get inaccurate. definitely hard to hit the smaller targets from 12 yards away. Uh, should I try that really small one? Why not? Woo! <laughs> I just nicked it on the top. But I hit it. That's a hit. Missed. And again, this is just Remington Thunderbolt. going on there it looks like it's kind of drifting to the left that's probably just my shooting though so yeah this can is getting a little warm all right let's go ahead and uh break the chronograph out because i think i've shown you all that it's pretty reliable it's definitely accurate it was like four shots the first four shots that i took that's that's really good okay so from 12 yards away so give me one second i'll get the chronograph all right, so this is gonna be in uh, really no particular order, but I've got some Remington Thunderbolt back in the gun. Uh, the second mag is gonna be some uh, Blazer, and uh, I believe, it doesn't say on here how fast this is going, but I'm pretty sure it's around 1200. And then I kinda, I wanted to bring out like some of the most popular stuff nowadays, so um, just wanna see if this works. This is the Federal Punch, it's a 29 grain. Uh, projectile and it is going supposedly 1070 but that's out of a two inch barrel for anybody who's familiar with the federal punch this is meant to be used in very short barrel um, um, yeah, firearms so yeah we'll see if this actually works but um, it's, it's it's really like more of a defensive cartridge made to be used out of very small little tiny guns so let me go and start with the uh, thunderbolt here I'm hoping my chronograph works. We're about seven-ish feet away from it, something like that. All right. I'm gonna put uh, ears on just for the heck of it. Okay. Yeah, 983. So we're definitely subsonic. Again, this is Remington Thunderbolt. I, don't, I didn't get a read. There we go. 10, 16. <laughs> uh, that was no reading. I'm having a hard time getting a reading on this thing. There we go. 948. We're just going to call it right there. I mean, I did load up 10 rounds. Might as well. Try to get as many readings as I can. Same. 913. So yes, we are very much still subsonic. All right. So this right here is the, uh, the Blazer, CCI Blazer. And I haven't shot this out of this gun. Anything actually that we uh, shoot from here on out it's going to be the first time I'm shooting it through this gun. I've only shot Remington Thunderbolt through here. And as you can see, it's 
very reliable. All right, CCI Blazer. Cycle, just no reading. Still no reading. There we go, 10.22. Oh, come on. This chronograph sucks. <laughs> I should probably have the little wing things on there. I'll probably, I'll, I'll put those on here in a sec. Come on, here we go. <laughs> I can't get a reading on it. Let me try and put those little wings on real quick. But uh, yeah, Blazer is still very much uh, subsonic for sure. So give me one sec. All right, I uh, put the little wings on, but I also angled the, the chronograph so you know down a little bit so I have more of a. Um, you know, flatter tra trajectory because I'm obviously up a little higher than the chronograph is. So hopefully this will work. Uh, so again, this is a 29 grain. Uh, this is the Federal Punch. So 29 grain. We'll see how fast it's going and if it even cycles in this gun. All right, let me put my ears on. Still can't get a reading. Oh, come. Gave me an error. At least I'm getting something. Well, boys, I think this whole chronograph thing is busted. It might have actually broke when it fell over when I was trying to do the uh, video the second time around. Again, this is the third time trying to make this video. But this federal punch is working just fine. I'd love to get one reading, just one. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but it cycles that federal punch just fine. Um, I'm not entirely too sure if that's subsonic because it kind of sounded like it had a little crack to it. Uh, this right here is going to be the Winchester Wildcat. And it's a 36 grain bullet moving uh, around 1280, I believe, something like that. So... Here goes nothing. Yeah, that was way quieter. I'm not getting a reading at all. All right, well, so much for the chronograph. But it's cycling those wildcats just fine. Yeah, that uh, suppress is a little warm for sure. So this right here is an absolute abomination. Um, I forgot the box over there, but it's uh, the Norma like Eco Speed, and it's supposedly going 1610 feet per second. I think. Um, again, these are of like rifle length barrels. Um, definitely not this right here, but. We'll see if we can get some sort of a reading with it, um, but I've never actually gotten the Norma Eco Speeds to cycle in anything. That includes uh, bolt action 22s. I, this stuff just sucks, and uh, I would not recommend buying it. So let's see what happens. Hey, it chambered. We'll see if we can get a reading, but I doubt it. What did I tell you? It's not gonna cycle. The failure to eject. Yeah, failure to eject again, I think. I'm not even gonna try. So, now on to some uh, <clears throat> other stuff, some high velocity stuff. And when I say high velocity, I mean really high velocity. So we're going to do some CCI Stangers. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, 22 Plinkster did a collaboration with CCI. And they made their CCI Stingers, which are a very fast and very light bullet. Um, it's a 32 grain bullet going 1,640 feet per second. Um, 
and they just simply renamed it Stanger because that's what he calls it. I've also got some Aguila Interceptors right here, 1,470 feet per second, and some Super Maximum Hollow Point, uh, which are 1,700 feet per second. The Super Maximum are also a very light bullet, 30 grains, and then these Aguila Interceptors are 40 grains. So we shall see how they cycle. But I am going to start. This is the... Uh, the uh, Aguila Super Maximum right here and I think I definitely want yours on for these suckers see if we can get a reading nope Ooh. yeah that sounds very loud hey I got a reading 1137 that's just over the uh, sub uh, the supersonic threshold uh, around like 1120 to like 1170 depending on elevation uh humidity all that kind of stuff is about your supersonic range so below like 1100 is usually subsonic and we are right now above 1100 at 1137 <laughs> some of those are louder, louder than the others 1204 with that very last one. That was the Aguila Super Maximum. And right here is the Aguila Interceptors. That they are claiming around 1400 feet per second out of a rifle length barrel. All right, 1101. And I'm pretty sure that was subsonic. getting a little blowback battery just died um but what i was saying is that i'm getting a little bit of blowback from um some of these rounds i can't really tell you exactly which ones but it's not too bad at all but i do notice a little bit of a splatter in the face that's what she i'm sorry okay so uh we're gonna go ahead and do these cci stingers right here the stangers and then i've got some uh cci uh, mini mag I believe this is the target which is a 40 grain and then I've got the uh, varmint which is a 36 grain I believe and they're both uh, advertised around 1250 ish feet per second but the CCI Stanger is uh, 1700 I think no 16 1640 all right and this will probably be the last of it too I've got some other ammo but I'm losing sunlight over there um, and uh, I think I'll get the point. So it's a reliable gun. <laughs> That's the point. And this thing right here is not doing too well. So we'll see. But let me try and get some readings with the uh, CCI Stanger. It's definitely loud. I'm not getting any readings. No reading whatsoever. Maybe it's going too fast. No. That thing supposedly can uh, read up to, I think it's like 9,999 feet per second, which there's literally no projectile on the, on the market that can even reach anything close to that. So it should be reading. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's broken. I might need to get a new one. So that's cool. It's going to be another $100. All right. So <laughs> this right here is the CCI Mini Mag. Uh, target the 40 grain target ah way quieter <laughs> i got an error too all right so yeah much quieter but can't seem to get a reading all right, last but not least, let's go with, what do we got? 
CCI Mini Mag uh, Varmint 36 grain hollow point. target the very last round it's accurate it's reliable chronograph sucks but this gun is amazing I love it and it just looks so good too uh, we're actually gonna go ahead and move back inside and uh, we'll take a closer look at it so I will see you guys inside yep I think the chronograph crapped out on me um, the fall that it took I think may have just dislodged some of these sensors. Um, right here you can see there's a couple of Phillips head screws. So hopefully I can just kind of open this up and see if anything's dislodged. That uh, rattling you hear, that's normal actually. That's just the extra nine volt battery that's in there. But at least I was able to get at least some general readings. Uh, the chronograph had always actually worked great up until the point it fell over. So hopefully when I open it up, um, it's just kind of obvious that something's dislodged, loose, or something like that. But uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and stick this aside. And we'll get right into this little baby. So this is the shoulder holster that I was using in the intro. And it fits uh, this PPKS pretty nice, even though I actually use it for this right here. This is the uh, Beretta Tomcat Ghostbuster Edition. Uh, which it's a great little gun. I'm actually having some issues with it, which is why I haven't done a video on it um, But uh, hopefully I'll get those issues fixed. Basically, it's just it has, it has trouble feeding I'm not really too sure why but anyways, we're not really here to talk about that gun. We are here to talk about the Walter PPKS in 22 long rifle Which I think is a beautiful little pistol here um, of course the Iconic Walter PPK is just you know, it needs no introduction at all. So You can see we are unloaded So if y'all don't know it does not have a slide release So you do need to pull the mag out in order to slend the, send the slide home so just real quick a uh, little backstory with me and the Walter PPK uh, so when I got into firearms, uh, I always liked movie guns. You know, obviously this is famous from the James Bond films. Uh, but uh, originally, like 15, no, maybe maybe 12 years ago, I had gotten the Walter PPK S in 380, and back then they were like 500 bucks. So really not that bad of a purchase for such an iconic gun that um, you know it was all metal and just work great. I remember it just being a great little shooter. Um, I ended up selling it way back when, uh, when I was getting into firearms, I was thinking, you know, I don't need too many guns. Uh, boy, was I wrong. I don't think you should ever sell a gun unless you actually, you, you absolutely have to. And I sold that, uh, the 380 version to a friend of mine, uh, which was honestly, I think the biggest regret I've ever made. <laughs> As far as being a gun owner, I wish I held, uh, hang, hung, sorry, I wish I hung on to that uh, Walter PPKS in 380 because nowadays they have almost double in price. They're like three, or sorry, they're like nine hundred dollars. But I've always had my eye on the 22 long rifle version just because I think it's a fun gun. I mean, 22s are so much fun to shoot, even if yeah, I don't really plan on using this in any kind of a self defense role or anything like that. Uh, my buddy that I sold the 380 version to, he really actually does carry it and use it as a self-defense gun. So, you know, I'm glad at least it went on to a good home and um, it's, it's my buddy. So, you know, I'm glad that I can always call him up and say, hey, let me borrow that thing. But when I saw this thing for 260 bucks, I could not pass up the opportunity to own a Walter PPKS again, even if it's the... Um, you know, 22 long rifle version. So I guess while we take a closer look at this, I just kind of want to keep this part sort of short and sweet. So we're just going to jump right into some pros and cons.
and that first pro again is just the uh, the price 260 bucks i don't need to keep reiterating it but holy cow that's cheap for an all metal gun like this um you know especially compared to those 380 slash 32 acp models 260 bucks which is actually cheaper than the lcp uh, light rack which actually let me go and pull that out real quick here it is in this uh what was it desantis yeah it's a desantis holster that came with the viridian reactor and um this is the laser version but i just wanted to pull this out real quick because i originally did the ultimate little spy gun uh, video on this right here and i still believe that this really is the ultimate little spy gun even if it doesn't have like the movie you know uh notoriety that the ppk does so let me just go ahead and set that right there and again getting back into these pros and cons um and just going over price one more time it is cheaper than this lcp right here uh which is usually around 300 bucks but this right here 260 bucks cannot go wrong second pro um this gun is incredibly reliable i really w I was absolutely surprised with just how reliable it is i use uh this stuff right here this break free lcp and it does a great job of lubricating as well as cleaning and all that kind of stuff so i think uh you know paired with the right cleaning and maintenance and all that kind of stuff i think you're gonna have a really reliable shooter if you end up getting one of these and it worked with uh, all different kinds of mags obviously the factory mag and i've got right here that nick taylor which as you can see has a blue uh, follower there we go and it's a 13 plus one mag um, so obviously the only thing you replace though is just the follower and the base plate because um, not not this outer base plate but the inner base plate that little button right there in there um, that you take out a little chunk of metal right here that I believe is like a round limiter, if I had to guess. And um, so when you take that out, you got this smaller follower right here. Um, you you can squeeze 13 rounds in here, which I think would make a great conceal and carry setup right here. If you have uh, 13 plus one, obviously you can carry with the hammer down. Um, we'll go over this uh, double action trigger pull here in a little bit but holy cow that double action trigger pull is very heavy uh, when we get to cons we'll talk about that but staying on pros the single action trigger pull is incredibly light let me see if i can just kind of show you guys here so take up is just a little bit right here it's really no big deal but you hit that wall gun goes off and then resetting it the trigger reset is very short right there pull it again so it's a great single action trigger the double action though is definitely less to be desired obviously you don't want to dry fire this too much it is a 22 it probably wouldn't hurt it too it hurt it that much but i don't really like to dry fire 22s as much as i would dry fire any other gun uh other guns i have no problem dry firing you know for example this little guy boing, boing. so this uh beretta right here it also has a little bit of take up but actually a much heavier i would say <laughs> that is definitely a heavier trigger pull or single action trigger pull than the ppks resets right there so it's cool but yeah this uh single action trigger pull right here is just unbelievable definitely a, a huge pro and i think most people are going to be shooting it in single action anyways i mean even if you have it uh you know with the the hammer down it's always pretty easy just to pull it back with your thumb and then start shooting but um just going back into reliability real quick again um it was reliable with all sorts of different mags like or at least the three different mags that i had plus this nick taylor um, but it was also very re reliable with all different kinds of ammo which you can see I have a plethora of right here. This is everything that we shot in the video, uh, as well as my Remington Thunderbolt, which by the way, yes, this does say bucket old bullets and a 22 golden bullet, but I just use this bucket to refill uh, with Remington Thunderbolt. Good old cheap, dirty stuff, but I like it. It's 
it's great. So aside from it being highly reliable with all different kinds of ammo, most ammo was still subsonic. So I think the only thing that was not subsonic was like this Federal Punch right here, as well as the CCI Stingers slash Stangers, and these right here, these super maximum uh, 30 grain hollow points. This, uh, these interceptors, I, this, it was tough to say. I kind of forgot. I, I, I need to go back and look at the shooting footage, but I can't remember if this was actually subsonic or not, or if I even got a reading on the chronograph, but something tells me that if you want to stay subsonic, I would just, you know, shoot some, uh, stuff that's advertised at like 1200 feet per second, like the Thunderbolt, CCI Blazer, the Mini Mags, and uh, right here, this Winchester Wildcat. So let me just go ahead and talk about this stuff right real quick because I hate it. <laughs> I just don't, uh, I don't understand why this is even on the market and why Norma, I love Norma. This is like the only Norma product that I do not like at all. And you know, when I saw this stuff and it was like 24 grain, um, 1,706 feet per second, it says, you know, I thought, oh, wow, that'd be a really cool round. And I couldn't even get it to cycle in a uh, bolt action rifle, um, which bolt action cycle everything. I guess the only thing I could use that in is like a revolver. With this gun, you, I think you definitely want to use high velocity. I didn't test any standard velocity stuff just because I went through a lot of different ammo and I just kind of figured whatever, this is probably all good enough. So this is all kind of like a bunch of common rounds along with the Thunderbolt. So I felt like that was sufficient, at least for testing. All right, so moving on to another pro is that it does come out of the box with a threaded barrel. But um, the one, uh, getting to cons, just you know, skip, skipping forward to a con, which we'll talk about a little bit more here in a second, is that it does not come with a thread protector. So you do have to source that yourself if you want to put any kind of a muzzle device on here. Um, obviously the only muzzle device you'd probably put on here is a suppressor. So if you don't plan on suppressing it, then that's fine. You don't really need to get a thread protect or a thread adapter. Um, but, uh, oh, and by the way, this thread adapter right here actually came from Nick Taylor as well. Taylor tactical supply.com. But it is really nice that this comes straight out of the box with a thread barrel. Unlike the Ruger LCP, which did not come with the thread barrel. I had to, um, source the whole barrel myself. So I've got an extra LCP barrel just lying around that I'll probably never use. So that's great. Just more crap to put in a drawer. So yeah, next pro, uh, accuracy wise, I thought it was actually a very accurate rifle, uh, gun. I was able to double up some shots when I took my time. And, uh, you know, when I wasn't taking my time, I could still at least hit the targets pretty well, uh, just about every single time. Of course, with the suppressor on, it's a little more difficult to be accurate. Anyways, Moving on to the next pro, at least subjectively, in my opinion, is that I think this gun looks absolutely amazing. It's really cool too, and the uh, full nickel uh, coating, um, it's nice and shiny, and it came, you know, um, just nice and clean looking straight out of the box. Uh, I did accidentally, let me see if I can get it to show up on camera. There's a little ding right there, I accidentally put it in it. So it's not exactly like the most durable finish, and I don't really even think I hit it that hard on, I forgot what it was. It was like on the table or something like that that I accidentally nicked it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the finish isn't super durable. You know, with something that's nice and shiny, it's really easy to kind of scuff it up. But I plan on, you know, using the gun. And whenever you use a gun, it tends to get scuffed up. So that's not really too big of a concern for me. So field stripping, if you all don't know about the uh, LCPs, it's, it's really easy to do. So just pull the uh, trigger guard down and you can lift off the barrel or lift off the slide and it goes forward. Um, I'm not going to take it completely off because the uh, thread adapter is on there. So, but as you can see though, it's pretty darn easy to take on and off. And then I always notice that it's kind of tough actually to sort of get that to go in, but I just notice if I kind of tap it on the back, it just sends it home. So, <laughs> That's uh, one way of doing it. Aside from field, field stripping, the racking this thing, it's, it's about as easy as the light rack. And I call it a light rack for a reason, because it's easy to rack. 
has a very light recoil spring. Same, whoops, same thing with this. Let me just go and get this out of here. But same thing with the uh, LCP right here. Uh, the LCP, sorry, LCP, the uh, PPKS is that it's very easy to pull back on this. I think it would be really good for somebody who has like, you know, uh, low grip strength or, you know, somebody who just is not really good at racking firearms too well. Um, so if that's your thing, then this might actually be a really good option for you. So here is the box. It says Walter on it, but it's a pretty nice box. I mean, you know, it's perfect for going to the range with or whatever you want to do with it. But it came with, um, you know, we'll kind of get to the, one of the cons is the fact that it only comes with one mag, but it did come with a bunch of, I, I just got the mag guts for that. That's that piece of metal right here at the bottom of the magazine, but this is kind of like the uh, magazine guts of what I pulled out to put that Nick Taylor um, 13 plus one in there, but it came with all these uh, accessories here. So you got a little wrench to uh, loosen up the thread uh, not thread protector, but the uh, thread adapter. Um, it did come with, actually I do want to kind of pull this stuff out because I don't know what this one thing is. It's like a pin for something. So it's this little pin right here. And I'm not exactly too sure what that's for. I assume that they put it in here because maybe there's a piece on it that breaks or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I guess they include that little pin for whatever reason. Um, one thing that I think is really cool is that they give you, if you want to, re, you know, for example, this gun was kind of shooting a little bit high. Um, so they give you different sights, different front sights. I should say they give you like a large one and a small one. So come on, focus. There we go. So you can see that, uh, yeah, I think that's the small one. That's the large one right here. So depending if you're uh, shooting low or high, you can swap out the front sights. So that's a nice little touch to give you those things. Um, this is an Allen wrench for something. And again, I have no idea actually what that Allen wrench is for. Is that for the front sight? No, it's not for the front sight. I honestly don't know what this Allen wrench is for either. I must be losing my mind. It's not for the grips. So anyways, who knows? Leave a comment if you know if you know what that pin is for and if you know what the Allen wrench is for. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment. But uh, yeah, so it comes with a wrench, which is nice just for taking off the uh, thread adapter. As you can see, it fits right in like that. Um, but yeah, going in the cons just real quick. Only comes with one mag. Uh, and each of these mags are like 30 bucks, which they're not cheap. Let's see. It didn't come with the thread adapter. So you do have to source that, um, which would be a second con if you plan on suppressing it. Um, the, like I was saying before, the, uh, double action trigger pull is just, you know, I always want to make sure it's unloaded, but that double action trigger pull, it's like 20 pounds. It's crazy. That's not even an exaggeration. It might even be like 25 pounds. So, <laughs> but once you get, whoops, once you get it into single action, like I was showing you before, I mean, it's got a great little trigger. The last little con that I have with this gun, and uh, it's definitely something that they could probably do, um, you know, from the factory, is maybe just put a tiny little bit of white paint on that front sight, a little tiny dot, because this thing just has no contrast for um, for these sights. They're all black, so. It's, it's kind of hard to shoot accurately with this gun whenever you have black sights like that. And then I got the uh, suppressor right here, but yeah, obviously it is a black suppressor. And so you got this thing on here and you're shooting. Oh, uh, it's going to be tough to even show you. But yeah, I mean, you can kind of see like that, that it's it's pretty tough just to kind of see your sights. So I might end up going, uh, going ahead and just throwing some little tiny paint on there, maybe some like fluorescent white. I don't really want to do orange because I think that will kind of make it, uh, you know, it's sort of detract from like the classic look of the PPK. So I don't want to do that, but yeah, that's going to be about it. Uh, I highly recommend this gun. If you're going for it 
if you're into James Bond or, you know, guns from films and uh, you've always been wanting the PPK, but you don't really necessarily want to spend like $900 on the 380 or 32 ACP, go ahead and pick yourself up one of these. Nobody's really going to know the difference. It looks identical to the 380. It feels identical to the 380. It's actually a pretty hefty gun. Um, actually, let's see how much it weighs real quick. All right, so we're looking at, well, you know, with the magazine in, it is an empty mag, but with the mag in, one pound, 7.8 ounces. That's pretty heavy for sure. But, you know, with the little tiny recoil of the 22, uh, you barely even notice that recoil because you know, a lot of the recoil is absorbed in this chunk of metal right here. So. Anyways, uh, let's just go and call it there. I, like I said, I just highly recommend it. I think it's a great little gun. It's a cool little spy gun if you're into sort of clandestine activities. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think that uh, you'll just be happy with it. So that's going to do it. And uh, let me go and get this scale out of the way. Set this down. There we go. That's going to do it. So thanks for watching.